Paul Butler of Carnegie's Department of Terrestrial Magnetism and Stephen Vaught of the University of California, Santa Cruz, have led an international team of astronomers in discovering so-called super-Earths in orbit around sun-like stars. Super-Earths are rocky planets larger than Earth, but smaller than gas giants. The team used years of observations from the W.M. Keck Observatory in Hawaii and the Anglo-Australian Telescope in New South Wales, Australia. The researchers used the subtle wobbling of the stars caused by the planet's gravitational pull to determine the planet's sizes and orbits. One of the planets orbits a star designated HD 1461, located 76 light-years from Earth and visible in the constellation Cetus. It has a mass of 7.5 times the Earth, is intermediate in size between Earth and Uranus, and orbits its star once every six days. The other planets orbit the bright star 61 Virginis, which is visible with the naked eye in the constellation Virgo, is only 28 light-years from Earth, and closely resembles the Sun in size, age, and other properties. Researchers found evidence of three low-mass planets, the smallest of which is five times the mass of Earth, and speeds around the star once every four days. The innermost planet is so close to its star and so hot that it glows visibly. This simulation shows the temperature patterns in its global atmospheric flow as it orbits the star. Well, in this case, uh, these planets uh, both orbit uh, stars that are similar to the sun. So the fact that they're in, in small orbits, orbits that are typically like you know four days or a week or so, means that they would be too hot, uh, of course, to support life or, or liquid water, at least as, as life as we know it. Um, they point the way toward uh, finding similar planets in similar orbits around nearby M dwarfs, which are uh, stars that are typically less than half the mass of the sun and typically put out less than 2% the energy of the sun. And uh, these sorts of planets around M dwarfs actually would be in a liquid water zone. Uh, and uh, so we are knocking on the door right now of being able to find habitable planets. The wobbling effect the planet caused on its star was one of the smallest ever detected. Well, the trick is in this right now, the amplitude, the semi-amplitude of the planet, the inner planet around 61 Burr is 2.1 meters a second. And the individual measurement errors uh, from, from each measurement are typically of more than 2 meters a second. So we're in a regime where our measurement uncertainties are comparable to the signals that we're looking for. So, uh, you know, human psychology strongly drives you to making a detection, whether there's a detection or not. And uh, one has to be very, very cautious uh, at this level when you claim a discovery. And what gives us the confidence uh, is that we see the signal in two, from two separate telescopes and that the two signals match up perfectly. The variety of planetary systems discovered in the past decade has astonished researchers. There are a couple of shocking things here. You know, prior to the discovery of planets, and we're only talking now 15 years ago, everybody was certain, both, you know, high-level stellar astrophysicists and and theorists and and science fiction Hollywood producers, everybody was convinced that all planets would look like our own, that there would be giant planets in distant orbits and and smaller Earth-like planets and and closer orbits, and they'd all be in happy circular orbits. And uh, in fact, this has really revealed the incredible poverty of the human imagination. Uh, Almost no planetary systems look like our own. And uh, we're now coming to the conclusion that these bizarre systems with small planets and close are pretty common. there are now about uh, five or six of these things, and uh, including the two that we're releasing right now. And uh, we live in a, in a very wacky universe, and, uh, and we're kind of the oddball. We're not, we're not normal by any stretch of the imagination. The discoveries are reported in two papers in the Astrophysical Journal. This is John Strom for the Carnegie Institution.